pray. Let's pray. Oh, gracious Father, we come before you this morning. Oh, God, we are excited to be here today and, Father, to celebrate you. And we just love you and we just thank you, Christ. This morning, we are ready for a word. Open our eyes, ears, and heart. God, that we can see. God, that we can receive on good ground because we have heard your word. And you said faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Father, we need you to use my mind, my mouth, and my body, everything that's within me to impart a well-timed word into the hearts of your people. So, Father... It is in the name of Jesus that we pray this prayer by faith. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And everybody who can agree with that, can you say amen? Amen. 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 Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Luke chapter 22. I, I'm going to cover two verses, uh, two different verses in the Bible. Amen. Uh, draw your attention to Luke chapter 22, verse 35 through 36. And then we're going to go over to Ephesians chapter 2, 8 through 10. And Luke 22, verse 35 and 36. And the Bible reads, then Jesus said to them, his disciples, when I sent you out without a wallet, traveling bag, or sandals, did you lack anything? And they said, not a thing, Lord. Then he said to them, but now the person who has a wallet and a traveling bag should take them along. The person who does not have a sword should sell his coat and buy one. Let me turn your attention to Ephesians chapter 2, 8 through 10. And the Bible reads in verse 8, For by grace you have been saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. Can the church say amen? I want to take you back to Luke chapter 22. This is an interesting set of verses, uh, one in which we could read over quickly, and if we're not careful to understand the significance of what Christ is speaking to us uh, through his word, you find that Christ is near his passion. His passion is the time in which he would suffer great anguish going to the cross. And so he is sitting around speaking with the disciples and, and, and there's a shift in tone. And you find that this shift happens when he says that, uh, that, that when I sent you out before, two by two, you didn't have any problems. You cast out demons. You didn't take money with you. You didn't take a coat with you. You didn't take a script with you. You just went. And you were able through my power, through my authority, to cast out demons, to heal people. That when you knocked on doors, that people opened them up, took you in and fed you. You didn't have opposition. You didn't fret for your life. It wasn't an issue, was it? And his disciple says, no, Lord. We had a good time. No, Lord, we, 
we, it, was, it was exciting. And you find in the Gospels on the recount, they come back rejoicing that they had such a good time. And he told them, hold up, slow down. Just don't get too excited about the fact you were able to cast out demons and heal people. He, he says, he said, you need to be more excited that your name is written in the book of life. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. And so here is Jesus revisiting, reminding them they didn't have a problem before. But you see a shift in tone. Somebody say a shift. There's a shift in tone that, that, that there is a preparation happening. And if we're not careful, we'll read right through it. But I want us to take our time and I want us to look at this and, and, and watch what it says. It, it, it says that, that, that but now it, it, that person who didn't take their wallet before, you better take it. That person who had that traveling bag and you left it behind, you better take it. The person who had, 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 had money, you better take it. And matter of fact, you probably want to get a sword when you go. Can you say amen? I want to talk to us from the subject title today, Ready to Rumble. Look at your neighbor and say, let's get ready to rumble. Yeah. I, you, you know, when you hear, let's get ready to rumble, it, 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 it brings up a connotation that it's time to fight. It, it's time to defend. It's time to get in there and mix it up. Somebody need to be praying with me right now. That, that Christ said that once before, that that. You had my authority and I walked with you and, and I babysitted you and I made sure you were protected and everything that you did was successful. You had no opposition. You had no issues. It was smooth sailing. He said, but I'm about to leave. I'm getting ready to leave this place. And you're not babies anymore. Somebody needs to say amen. You, you're not immature anymore. You're, 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 you, I have prepared you. Somebody say prepare. I, I prepared you over these three and a half years to rumble. Oh, yeah, I, I know. That's a little different. I, I, I know that. But if you read in your word, the Bible says that Christ came the first time as a lamb. Oh, meek and, and nice and gentle. Somebody need to say amen. But the Bible says that when he comes back again, he's not coming back like a lamb. He's not coming back all tender, but he's coming back as the Lion of Judah. And he's going to conquer. And the word says that we are to occupy till he comes back. So he tells his key disciples, his 12, that when... I leave. You got to get ready to rumble. You got to get ready because when you get out there, you're not going to be all uh, uh, accepted like you were before. You're not going to have smooth sailing like you did before. That after my passion, after my suffering, when everything has, has fallen apart on the earth, that you're going to find that the equipping that I did for you, it's going to serve you well. So you're going to have to be prepared. And I believe Jesus is still continuing to say that to us, prepare. Preparation is essential. And this is what he's saying, but now prepare. Preparation. Prepare your words. Prepare what you're going to take, prepare your knowledge, prepare your monies, equip yourself with a sword. And he is talking about something to defend yourself. How many people know that God has called us to defend the faith? 
that we should stand boldly before God and proclaim his word before people that God has equipped us through his word to rumble with the devil. Somebody need to say amen. Oh, yeah, the, there are people out there that are not going to be kind. There are people out there who are going to come after you, but you got to be ready. You got to be ready to rumble. See, nah, I think that's the problem, Brother Smith, that, that we got so many people today that are scared. They're scared to stand up for their faith at work. They're scared to stand up against the family for their faith. They're scared to stand up against their friends about their faith. They're scared. What if they say something that's derogatory? What if they say something that's against what I believe? I, I, I'm not equipped. I don't know what to do. But Christ tells you to get ready. Christ tells you to equip yourself. Christ tells you, watch this, you will rumble with somebody. He said, if they hated me, they'll hate you too. <laughs> oh, I know, I, I know, I, I, I know that, 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 that people walking around in peace, love, and happiness. I, I, I understand that, but if you are a real believer, if you're really walking in the word of God, the devil's after you. The workers of unrighteousness, they are after you. They can't stand you. They don't like you. You always wonder who's backstabbing me. Why would they do that? I'm nice to everybody. It ain't them. It's that spirit in them. It's that enemy that, that, that hangs behind them and pulls the strings. But I didn't say it like that. I even apologize and, and I even tried to help them out, but, but they still don't like me. Somebody need to pray right now. They, they still talk about me and I don't care what I do and how I help them. They still continue to undermine me. I don't know why. I don't know why. Well, maybe you need to turn around and start rumbling. Maybe you need to prepare and say, you know what? Every time they come against Christ, every time they come against the word, every time they come against Christ's deeds, maybe you need to stand up and say something. Maybe you need to defend the faith. Maybe you need to tell them what's what. Can somebody say amen? Look at your neighbor and say, get ready to rumble. You, know, you got to be prepared to rumble and understand that, that, that we are needed to be warriors. Christ asks us to be warriors in the army of the Lord. Oh, well, watch this. I was watching TV uh, yesterday, and, and yesterday marked the anniversary, a 20th anniversary of uh, uh, a mass gathering that happened uh, years ago, 20 years ago. And, and as I was sitting there listening to the main guy talk, <laughs> this particular person who is of another religion used the name of Christ and quoted the word more than what you will hear in a sermon. And I'm thinking to myself, if, if I was a weaker Christian, if I was a less read Christian, I would think that it was just another version or it was just another uh, 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 amalgamation of Christianity. I would think that this person probably had some type of relationship with Jesus. But can I tell you, it's chicanery. Can I tell you it's bamboozlement? Can I tell you it's foolishness? Can I tell you that they don't believe one bit in Christ? And everybody's sitting down there and they're clapping and, and watch this. And, and he's mixing these things together. And everybody's standing out there smiling and clapping. And you got all these men who need to be in church. Standing out there in the heat, going, yeah, all right, because they dress nice. We dress nice here because they clean cut. We clean cut here. 
But watch this. In the next breath, he starts talking about how their founder had multiple kids for multiple women and was saying, and he had them stand behind him, and he said it was good that he did that. so that they could help the new leader advance the religion. And the new leader said, well, I've done the same thing in Mexico, all around here. And then proceeded to say, players, you players out there, y'all need to stop. And was saying that we take care of our wives. Can I tell you that is the trick of the enemy? Can I say that that those ladies that were paraded in front were standing there while he's saying all this stuff? Now I have daughters. I guarantee you. If if she's married to a man, he better not have some other wives or women out there. <clears throat> Somebody need to just give the Lord some praise right there. But their founder deceived everybody. And he told everybody, no, I'm holy, I'm this, that, and the other, but turns around, secretly did all this stuff, and so he got, he, he got busted, and it all came out, and everything started falling apart. We are losing so many people to foolishness. Yeah, them brothers out there. Yeah, those men are out there. Yeah, they're there. Because they get to eat their cake, drink the Kool-Aid, eat the pie. They get everything. And the ladies get nothing. But he did say they can cook. (laughs) If we don't stand up and equip ourselves, if we don't Get in there and mix it up. Just because they look at it like this. People get scared. Man, that don't scare me. The word of God says that he'll give us the strength to tread on adders, to handle snakes and demons. I ain't scared of you. Why y'all need to say amen. You don't bother me. You don't bother me mean mugging. I mean mug with you. (laughs) I ain't always been the pastor. Can somebody say amen? (laughs) Can I tell you ministering or speaking or encouraging family, friends, and and strangers, it's not easy. It's not easy to do that. It's not easy to minister to them. It's not easy to talk to them. But I got some family that I need to see saved. I have some friends that I want to see in Christ. There are some strangers that I know that are nice folks to me that I want to see them in the Lord. And it's going to take me equipping myself. It's going to take me being ready to rumble against the enemy that is influencing them. And I got to be ready. I got to be ready. I, I, I can't sit back and watch this. And I think Christ backs this up, that he doesn't want you to just sit there and let him do all the work. And that's what he was saying, that the time has passed, that I do all the work for you. I have equipped you. I've taught you. I've told you. I've given you the Holy Spirit. Now I need you to be a willing worker and get out there and spread the word of God. I need you to be ready to rumble. I don't need you to be scared. But I need you to be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. 
Oh, God is, God is, is, is asking us, is, is, is requesting of us, is commanding us that we should be ready to go out and share the word of God. The key is preparation. Somebody say preparation. And, and, that's, and I think that's one of the big issues that, that we're not prepared, that, that we don't feel equipped. And so when we come to church, we many times we, we have we make the mistake of, of, yes, we jump and we sing and we have a great time. And then we get half the word <laughs> and we don't get empowered. We don't get totally taught and we end up going off half cocked and it don't work. So we get in there and a person challenges us and, and we say, well, the Bible um, says, um, uh, oh, man, what's that verse, man? What is that verse? And they like, but I'm telling you, it's in there. It's in there. Well, show it to me. I don't know where it is, but it's in there. Why you keep quoting that to me? Well, what does that mean? Well, I don't know. Uh, um, it means something. Well, break it down for me. I, will, I mean, you know, I mean, I think he's trying to tell you, you don't even know. So how am I to help somebody or how am I to ask for help when you can't answer my questions? When I push back against you and see, that's the problem. We don't like people pushing back against us. We want everybody to agree with us. We want everybody to get in line with us. Can I tell you where you can find that in church? And if you want everybody to agree with you, you want everybody to say amen, then sit right here and talk to people. But if you want some pushback, if you want to go deeper, if you want to mix it up, get out there and talk to your neighbor. Talk to the friend who doesn't come to church. Talk to the stranger who's standing on the side of the road. Talk to them and see where they are. Oh, yeah. Oh. I know. I I. I felt that. I felt that in the spirit. I, I felt people' heart going, beating fast, or palpitating. Did Christ really say that? Oh Lord! <laughs> but let me show you somebody who started off one way and was able to grow in the power and in the might of God. Was able to get in there and mix it up. And I want this to encourage us. Amen. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 32 and 33. I want to show you about Paul. Paul was, Paul was, was uh, an apostle that was called after Christ's ascension. And, and Paul, who was formerly Saul, persecuted people and, and killed Christians and, and, and chased Christians down and jailed them. And, and so, of course, he gets converted on the road to Damascus. And so <clears throat> once he gets converted and Barnabas changes his eyes and opens them again, he goes out immediately and starts to tell people that Jesus is Lord. And you find it reads that the governor under King Aretas uh, uh, put guards around the city of Damascus to catch me or to catch Paul. So Paul was let down in a basket through the opening of the wall and escaped from him. Now, now here's the thing that that when Paul came to Christ, he went right out unequipped, unprepared. Started talking about Jesus is Lord. Jesus is the one. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And they tried to kill him. Because he wasn't, and he didn't expect that. He, he, you ever thought that, that once you come to Christ and once you get your life right and once you try to live right and you go to your family and you start talking about how good God is, and we're going to stop smoking, we're going to stop drinking, we're going to stop cursing, we're going to stop looking at this on TV. I know reunions at my house. I know the holidays are at my house, but don't bring the alcohol. Make sure that, you know, ain't no smoking in the house no more, and all that kind of stuff. You think your family's going to go, yay, woo! See, I know nobody's been through that except us. Uh, see. 
Your family is going to switch the gathering. Your family is going to start saying, you in a cult? <laughs> Would you listen to that guy on TV? <laughs> Your family is going to change on you. And many times people are, 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 uh, can't handle it. They can't handle rejection. But Christ has taught us to be tough. To understand you will have opposition. He told the disciples, it's going to change. It's going to shift. You're going to have to rumble. You're going to have to mix it up. You're going to have to get in the fight. He's going to make you make a choice. The enemy will force you to make a choice. You're going to have to live for Christ or live for the devil. You're going to have to do right or you're going to have to do wrong. You're going to heaven or you're going to hell. It is no in between. Every choice you make is one for God or one for the enemy. Look at your neighbor and say, make the right choice. Make the right choice. Make the right choice. Watch, watch this. So, so, so Paul, uh, Paul, he, he gets out and, and he goes and they're after him and, and they're about to kill him. But you find that, that, that Paul escapes. And can I tell you, many people don't read about this, but Paul was gone three years. Paul was Gone. Paul disappeared, went to Africa or somewhere. And he laid low and prepared. Prepared. And when he came back, he came with power. When he came back, he was sure. When he came back, he was used of God. And he ministered and he, and he blessed and he healed and he changed people in the name of Jesus. So 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 19, the preparation over the years that, that God had wrought in Paul matured him. And, 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 and toward the end of his ministry, watch what he says. He says, whatever other people dare to brag about, I, like a fool, can also brag too. Are they Hebrews? <laughs> so am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they Abraham's descendants? So am I. Are they Christ's servants? <laughs> it's insane to say it, but, but I'm far better a one. I've done much more work. I've been in prison many more times than they been beaten more severely and I faced death more often. Five times the Jewish leaders had me beaten with 39 lashes. Three times Roman officials had me beaten with clubs. Once people tried to stone me to death. Three times I was shipwrecked and drifted on the ocean for a night and a day. Because I have traveled a lot, I face dangers from raging rivers, from robbers, from my own people, and from other people. I face dangers in the city, in the open country, on the sea, and from believers who turned out to be false friends. Because I've had to work so hard, I've often gone without sleep. Been hungry, been thirsty, and gone without food and without proper clothes during cold weather. This is Paul. Paul said that God equipped me and that he used me and that it wasn't all easy. Wasn't all pie in the sky. The Bible goes on to say that if it's not unto blood, you okay. Yeah, yeah, you all right. Yeah, they may be talking about you in the family, but, but it's not unto blood. Uh, they may be messing with you at work, but it's not unto blood. They may not talk to you when they pull up in the driveway, but it's not unto blood. When you start shedding blood like the apostles did, like the martyrs did, like the former fathers of the faith and sisters of the faith did, hiding in caves, cut in half, thrown to the lions, you start talking to me. Can somebody praise the Lord right there? Hallelujah. 
You find that that we are ready, are equipped in this word to rumble with the enemy. The Bible says that the gates of hell shall not prevail. The Bible says that, that, that our people that we love have been called in the snare of the enemy. That we are equipped to go and to share the good news. To liberate them out of captivity. Somebody needs to say amen. I, I got some cousins in captivity. I got some aunties in captivity. I got some uncles in captivity. I got some friends behind the gates of hell. But God has equipped me to speak into their life. To go in to do the things that others couldn't. God has prepared me to rumble with that devil in their life. If you're in here right now, if, 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 if you are looking at your situation, if you are looking at your friends and your family and you're saying to yourself, I need to pull them out. I need to change them. I need to help them. I want to let you know it's all in this word. It's all in his spirit. It's all in the power and the might of God. That same wonder working power resides in the believer that raised Christ from the dead. And that is the spirit of God. And if you have that spirit, you have been equipped. If you know your word, you've been equipped. If you have the authority and the power in the name of Jesus Christ, you have been equipped. Look at your neighbor and say, get ready to rumble. I'm ready to go after it. I'm ready to wrestle with it. I'm ready to turn some lives around. I'm ready to bless some lives. I'm ready to help some people. I'm ready to bring some young men back into Christ. I'm ready to turn some young ladies' lives around. I'm ready to mend some relationships through the power of the God. Can you praise him right now? Hallelujah. Oh, we serve a great God. See, one person once said that a lasting work requires extensive preparation. It requires extensive preparation. That if you want it to last, if, if, you, want, if you want to be a blessing, if, if you want to change life, you got to be prepared. You can't go off half cocked. You can't go off and know part of your word. You can't go off and not know and understand the power in the name of Jesus. You can't affect a life if you don't understand that you are blood bought, that his sacrifice covered every sin because the devil will come in and remind you of your transgression. The devil will come in and remind you of your failings. The devil will come in and remind you that he has you and will never let you go. But you got to look at that devil and say, let's get ready to rumble. You got to look at that devil and you got to tell him that Christ has set me free. And he that the Lord says free is free in thee. Hallelujah. If you set free, you need to give him some praise. Because God hadn't given you a spirit of fear, but a power and a love and a sound disciplined mind. If you're in here right now and your mind is sound and you know the love of Christ, you need to look at your neighbor and say, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to rumble with him. I'm ready to take that family back. I'm ready to take that son back. I'm ready to take that daughter back. I'm ready to bless that friend. I'm ready to share my faith with my co-workers. We need some tough Christians. Tap your neighbor and say, you looking pretty tough this morning. You find that, you, you find that, that, that and I'm going to hurry along because I'm almost out of time. But you, you, you find that in Luke, uh, uh, Luke chapter 14, you, you find that, that Jesus gives a, 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 an analogy. And he says uh, uh, in verse 26 and 33, he says, large crowds. Were, were traveling with Jesus and, and they turned to them and they said, if, if, if people come to me and, and are not ready to abandon their fathers and mothers and wives and children and brothers and sisters 
as well as their own lives. They can't be my disciples. And so, so those who do not carry their crosses and follow me cannot be my disciples. He said, suppose you want to be a builder of a tower. He said, you first have to sit down and count the cost. Then you would see if you have enough money to finish it. Otherwise, if you lay a foundation and cannot finish the building, everyone who watches will make fun of you. They'll say this person started to build but couldn't finish the job. Or suppose a king is going to war against another king. He would first sit down to think things through. Can he with his 10,000 soldiers come against the other king with 20,000 soldiers? If he can, he'll send an ambassador for terms of surrender or peace. And in the same way, none of you can be my disciples unless you give up everything. Wow. Those are powerful words from our Lord. But if we dig into it, we will find that he is talking about preparing. The king had to prepare. The builder had to prepare. Everybody has to be equipped. Everybody has to prepare for the fight. See, when you're preparing for your destiny or for your purpose or for your destiny, the right perspective helps you prioritize. Proper preparation helps you prioritize your friends, helps you prioritize family, helps you prioritize your resources. Have you counted the cost before you ran off half cocked? Or are you, or are you lacking in information? Are you lacking in your understanding of the spirit of God? Is that why you don't say anything to people? Is that why you don't like to pray? Is that why church is foreign to you? See, the lack of priorities frustrates people. And it ends up causing a shame, as the Lord said. They'll laugh at you when you don't know your word. They'll laugh at you when you don't have a basic understanding of the Bible. Because you're mixing everything up. Because you're telling everybody the wrong thing and leading them the wrong way. Can you say amen? The devil is going to laugh at you. He'll let you sing and he'll let you dance. But, but the thing that he respects is the word of God. The thing that he respects is your power through God, through the name of Jesus Christ. That's the only thing he respects. That when Jesus was in the desert, he wasn't dancing and singing against the devil. He said, it is written. It is written. It is written. The devil had to leave him alone. The Bible said if you submit yourself to God, resist the devil, he'll flee. Come on, somebody need to praise the Lord right there. See, that's when you should have been praying. That was a good time to praise. That meant you knew that. Amen. Watch this. So, so, so I'm, 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 I'm closing. I'm closing right now because we're almost done. Watch, watch this. So, 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 so he goes on to say that, that, uh, that understanding like the king. Preparation is a huge responsibility. It's a huge responsibility and it affects others. The king understood if I send my troops out and they're not able to conquer, a lot of people going to die. You got to understand that your preparation affects your family. You have to understand your preparation affects your kids. You have to understand your preparation affects your witness with other folks. You got to understand that proper preparation makes the difference. Oh, oh boy. Oh, boy. Uh, and you got to understand how to assess your shortfallings. That's what Jesus said, that you got to go back and you got to look. If you ain't got a purse, you got to check it out. If you, don't, if you don't know how to talk to people, you got to equip yourself. If you don't have a sword for, to defend yourself, you need to get one. And you may need to sell something. 
so you can get your sword. Because when you get out there, the word, world is not pretty. When you get out there, the devil's going to be after you. So you got to equip yourself. Don't go out and try to find a Ginsu knife. Can somebody say amen? Don't take a knife to a gunfight. You need to get out there with your own sword. How many people know you had a sword of the word? How many people know you got the shield of faith? How many people know that God has equipped you with a power that's greater than any power, which is he himself? You got to be ready. Look at your neighbor and just say, get ready. Get ready. Now, I'm going to close right here, but I'm going to leave you with this. That, that there was a... Uh, there was a there was a certain Christian that uh, uh, Satan came and attacked and he shot the first uh, shot of a poisonous dart at his heel. And but it didn't hurt him because his feet were shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Uh, Satan turns around and he shot a, a, a another arrow at his loins. And, and but it didn't affect him because his loins were girded. With the belt of truth. But undeterred, you find that Satan, he, he went after him and he shot at his breast. But he had the breastplate of righteousness on. The Christian knocked it away. And the devil, being frustrated, slipped around behind the Christian. And he shot him right in the pocketbook and killed him dead. You'll get that on the way home. You got to be equipped in every area. You got to be prepared across the board. You, you can't just be prepared and know a Bible verse. You got to be equipped at home. You got to be equipped in your parenting. You got to be equipped in your financing. You got to be equipped everywhere, in every area, at every time. Because the enemy is going to try to find your weakness. Are you prepared? Are you prepared? Can you take on the enemy? Is he winning in your life? Oh, you praise God and he, he's awesome. But when he hits your health, you, you give up. God is awesome and you're ready to serve him but the devil hits your finances and you fall apart. Oh, you so excited about reading and praying, but you get into an argument and it erupts in the house and you lose your focus. <laughs> See, Dr. E.W. Millen said that when he taught his classes at the seminary and he would take young ministers through prep work and they get mad at him. They get frustrated. It's going too slow. It's not fast enough. And he'd often have to remind them that when God grows a tree, it takes three generations for a good, strong tree. He said, but when God grows a squash, it takes three weeks. He said, do you want to be a tree or you want to be a squash? Can you say amen? He said, every, every person has a choice. Whether you want to be a tree or you want to be a squash. See, if you do things speedily and cut corners, you're going to be like that squash. It's so the reason why people refer to you being or people being destroyed or eliminated or broken as being squashed. Because it's easy to bust a squash. I'm talking to those who have raised some vegetables. Don't drop it. Don't, don't handle it wrong. It busts just like that. But a tree can withstand hurricanes. A tree can withstand tornadoes. The right grounding, the right root system, a tree can grow hundreds of feet. You want to be a tree 
You want to be a squash. The choice is yours. What you do today is going to determine what you will be in front of the enemy. I want to be a tree. I want to be strong and unbending in the word. I want to be a tree. I, I, I want the winds of adversity not to blow me down. I want to be a tree that when the enemy comes in like a flood, that the Lord that I serve will strengthen my backbone and will allow me to stand flat-footed, will allow me to stand doing all I know to do, stand therefore and see the salvation of the Lord. I want to be that tree. So I'm going to prepare today. I'm going to get ready to rumble today. I'm not scared because the strength that I have is not my strength. Because in my weakness, his strength is perfected. Can you praise the Lord? Look at your neighbor and say, I'm ready to rumble. I'm ready to rumble. I'm ready to go right now and do it. Hallelujah. If you're in there today, I want to let you know that God is with you. Oh, he's with you. But he needs you to be ready. See, when you are an immature Christian, that, that God did everything for you. Everything happened just like that. Life was smooth when you first came to Christ. But now it's a little rough. Now you got to work a little harder. Now you, you got the winds of life blowing against you. But he said, get ready. Equip yourself. He said, prepare. And you'll have good success. Are you ready to get equipped? Are you ready to go forth? Are you ready to stand against the enemy? If I'm talking to you today, I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. And I want to pray with those who may not know Christ. You'll never stand against the enemy if you don't know him as Lord and Savior. You'll never properly equip yourself. It's mandatory to receive him as Lord and Savior. Let us close our eyes. No weapon If you're in here today and you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, I just need you to slip your hand up that we can pray together. If you're in here today and you're ready to get equipped, you're ready to commit to the equipping of the Lord, I need you to lift your hand. I see you. I see you. You can put it down. I see you. I see you. I see you. I see you. I, I want to let you know as you pray in your own heart and mind after me that God is going to equip you. And he is going to put you in position to share, to defend the word, to defend the faith, to stand when other people are falling. The Bible says, though a thousand fall at your right hand and 10,000 at your left hand, it shall not come near you. Oh, God, I keep you because he's a keeper. Hallelujah. Against me. Oh, Father, today, God, I come before you. I've heard the word of the pastor, but more importantly, I've read your word. That I need to be equipped. I need to prepare. Father, reveal my shortcomings. Reveal my failings. And God, forgive me. God, I ask that you would keep me. I ask that you would change my life. You are Lord and Savior. You are King of kings, Lord of lords. And today I've made a choice to serve you. So it's in the name of Jesus that I declare I'm yours. Take me higher. Put me in position. Give me the wisdom and the strength, God. By faith, God, 
to take on the adversities of life. Get me ready to rumble. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And amen. Come on, can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise?